Hello everyone, welcome again to my channel. In this video I will show how to create a burger box packaging die line using Adobe Illustrator. In the end, we will test the die line in ESCO Studio. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from my channel. So without further delay let's get started. Start with new document. Choose A3. Change name to burger box. Change units to centimeters. Press create. This is the box that we will draw. 10 by 10 by 4 centimeter. You can change your art board size anytime. Select rectangle tool. Change the fill color to none and choose any stroke color. Click anywhere. Type 10 by 10 centimeters. Change stroke to 0 0.5. Select this rectangle and create a copy of it by holding the Alt key and dragging it upward. Press the Shift key to adjust it perfectly. Always make sure that lines are well connected. Press Ctrl plus Y to check in the wire frame. Go to the transform, set reference point to center bottom, and change its height to 4 cm. Now we want to extend the top nodes to change the width from top. Go to the preferences and change the keyboard increment to 0.1 cm. Select the direct selection tool. Select first nod, now with keyboard keys click 10 times to the right. Do the same to left nod. Now with rectangle tool draw small rectangle. Change size to 0.2 by 0.2 cm. Change stroke color. and snap to this edge. Press Ctrl plus R to show rulers. Drag a guideline until snap. Choose the Add Anchor Point tool. Add an anchor point by clicking here at the intersection of the line and guideline. Add another nod to other side. Select the flap and create a copy of it by holding the Alt key and dragging it. Hold Shift and rotate. Snap to this edge. Don't forget to always make sure that lines are well connected by pressing Ctrl plus Y to check in wireframe view. Now we will create a triangle shaped glue flap here. Select rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle starting from the new nod created. Scale until snap with the top edge here. Select the Direct Selection tool. Select and move this knot to snap here. Select the right side nods and move a little bit to left, we need the width to be less than the width of this flap. Now select the bottom nod and move upward to look nearly parallel to this line. Now we want the shape to look like triangle. Select this nod and move down here. Select and change it to rounded corner. Create a copy of it by holding the Alt key and dragging it to left. 
flip horizontally, and snap to the side. Now you can delete the guideline. Create a copy of this flap by holding the Alt key and dragging it to left. Flip horizontally and snap to the side. Now this will be the top part. If we go back to our reference, this is the part. We want to create the top lock. Go back. Select the top flaps and duplicate to bottom. Flip vertically and snap. To create the lock, select Rectangle tool. Draw a rectangle here. Go to the transform, set reference point to center top, and change its height to 1 cm. Duplicate. Select the top rectangle and change the height to 0.5 cm. Now snap the other one to bottom. Go to the transform, set reference point to center, and change the width to 13 cm. Make another copy. Now select all three and unite. Select direct select. Select this nod and with keyboard click four times to write. Do the same for this nod. Now the top part is ready. Select all. Hold alt and duplicate. Flip vertically and snap. Press Ctrl plus Y to check in wireframe. Now for bottom part, we don't need the lock here so select and delete. Select this part and duplicate. Snap to top. Now we want to create the sides locks, as you can see here. So move this rectangle. Hold shift and rotate. Snap to edge. The height of this part should be less than the front lock. So go to transform, set reference point to center left, and change its height. Minus 0.5 centimeter. Hold shift and align at bottom. Select both and unite. With direct select tool, select this nod and with keyboard click for times down. Select the opposite nod and make it rounded to maximum level. Now the side lock is ready. Duplicate to other side and flip. We still need steam holes. Select ellipse tool. Draw a circle. Change size to 1 cm. Align with this side. Duplicate. Select both. Ctrl plus G to group. Now align center with this side. 
now our work is ready. Select all. Control plus G to group. Change artboard size. Now align center to artboard. Ungroup. Now we will divide our shape for crease and cut lines. Go to layers. Create new layer. Name it crease line. The crease lines or fold lines is all the inner lines of our design. The die line or cut line is all the lines at the outside edge. As you can see this line is divided to both. The small line here is a cut line but this will be crease line. Select direct select tool, hold shift and select all inner lines. Ctrl plus C to copy. Select crease layer. Go to edit. Paste in place. Hide layer 1. Select all crease lines. Go to stroke. Change to dash line with 5 points. Change color. Show layer 1, hide crease layer. Now we want to create the bleed area first. Select all. Deselect the two circles. Go to Pathfinder and Unite. Go to Object. Path. Offset Path. Change offset to 0.3 cm. Change stroke color of the bleed. Control plus X to cut. Go to layers. Create new layer and name it bleed. Go to edit. Paste in place. Hide layer. The remaining lines is the cut lines. Select all. Right click. Make compound path. Change layer name, I will name it die cut lines. Show all layers. So this is done. Let we use ESCO Studio to test our die line. Select the cut lines. Choose cut. Do the same for fold lines. Press select all cuts and folds. Press check. Press fold. Choose base panel. Choose board type and continue. Now fold edges with the right degree and test each part. Now save the file. Go to Window, ESCO, Studio Designer, Show Studio. Now everything is ready to start designing. Thanks for watching.